All right, so welcome to another episode of Inside IALR. Um, thanks for thanks for joining us today. So, I think one of the coolest things about the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research is that we are involved in so many different areas. You know, ranging from and, and we've talked about all these on this podcast, from manufacturing to uh, workforce programs to cool research to um, what we're going to talk about today is actually community health and and how to improve community health in in uh, Danville, Pennsylvania County, and Caswell County. Um, we do that through a program called um, the REACH Partnership, one of our many acronyms. That's the Regional Engagement to Advance Community Health. And I'm here today with Cassandra Shelton, the program manager for that. Um, Cindy Petit, who is a care coordinator and certified community health worker. And we'll talk more about what that means uh, for the REACH Partnership. Uh, and then Maggie Richardson, who's the regional coordinator for the Health Collaborative, which which supports this program. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the invitation. Absolutely. Um, so Cassandra, we'll start with you. Um, tell us a little bit about what is sort of the overarching goal and, and strategies of the REACH Partnership. What What is the REACH Partnership? So the REACH Partnership is comprised of community health workers, community paramedics, and care coordinators. Our overarching goal is to improve health outcomes in our region. Um, historically and currently, we still rank low in health outcomes. So our effort to do that is through a coordinated approach. So we bring siloed providers together to connect people to resources and services that they may struggle to obtain on their own. Um, and, and talk to me a little bit about who, who are some of the different organizations that are involved. So the Institute is the lead and fiscal agent, obviously. Gateway Health, Sova Health, the Danville Life Saving Crew, Danville, Pennsylvania Community Services, Caswell EMS, Paths, and Compassion Healthcare, and the Danville Redevelopment and Housing Authority. So that's that's a good group there. And how did I know this sort of was formed out of a, a separate program, and then this is sort of a, a, an evolution of that. What what is the backstory behind this program, this this outreach, this effort? Yeah, so, you know, there's growing concern in the region over health disparities. And like Cassandra mentioned, our low rankings uh, in health outcomes across in the state and the region. And so um, at the time, the Institute was looking at community health worker models as sort of a workforce strategy, as a way to get people into um, the health sector uh, through a non-clinical pathway. And at the same time, the health collaborative and our access to healthcare action team was, you know, also looking at these health disparities um, and a lot of the data around um, high rates of chronic disease, uh, lack of access to healthcare, which was leading people to overutilize the emergency department. And, you know, we had a lot of folks who were essentially using the ER as their primary care system. And so, um, this is not a good thing because it strains the healthcare system, it strains the EMS systems, it's very, very costly, um, and it's not actually helping to improve people's health. It's sort of a Band-Aid uh, solution on a much larger problem. And so um, the Health Collaborative was also looking at community health workers as a strategy for helping connect people to primary care and other resources and improving community health outcomes. And so these groups all came together um, and they took a a see the possible trip to Richmond to learn about a new community health worker model that they were piloting in that area. And the group came back from the trip and said, yes, we definitely need to do this in our region. This would this would be really impactful here. And so um, they received a grant from the Danville Regional Foundation and were able to hire um, 10 community health workers, a care coordinator, and a program manager. And so, um, you know, in those first several years, um, as the CHWs were meeting with community members, they realized that this was a lot more than just connecting people to primary care. There were so many other social determinant needs like transportation and housing and jobs. Um, And so a lot of their work was focused on connecting people to all types of resources beyond just healthcare. Um, And so the REACH partnership really formed as sort of the next iteration of the Community Health Worker Project. So again, including a lot of those partners um, that Cassandra mentioned and really thinking about how we create a coordinated system of care so that um, 
all of the partners are talking together, are um, aligning their work, they're sharing information and data so that, um, you know, their systems are working more efficiently, but also we're um, creating better population health outcomes. If we can improve health for the individuals who go through the program, um, that leads to larger community-wide impacts too. So, um, so it's sort of been an evolution over time. And, and when did that community health worker program start? That started in 2015. Okay. And then the REACH partnership, that was formed within the last three years. So Maggie, you're talking about the community health worker. And I know that that role has, as you said, that role has evolved to sort of encompass more than just just connecting to primary care, but to other resources. Um, and that, that has now become a coordinated care team. So for all, I'll open it up to any of you guys to what is a coordinated care team? And I guess who are the different people involved in that? Well, I guess I'll jump in on this one. <laughs> the coordinated care team is an array of organizations put together, and we all offer one common goal, and that is for the client to become sustainable and self-sufficient. We look at all avenues. We look at mental health. We discuss housing. We discuss uh, education. We discuss food and advocacies. Anything that might be preventing them from to become healthy, that's what we basically do. Mm -hmm. We learned that um, it's good to get a PCP, but if I don't have sustainable housing, I'm not gonna focus on whatever the PCP tells me to mm -hmm. do. So we have to look at the whole array of what's going on with that particular person during the time that they come into the program. Right, and it's on, on that team, it's a community health worker and then a community paramedic, correct? Yes, if the client has a clinical need, we will bring in a community paramedic. What we try to do is let the paramedics focus on the clinical needs and the community health workers focus on the social determinants of health. But what we find often is that it's usually intertwined. So, Cassandra, you were just talking about how the, the, um, it's all connected, you know, the, the determinants of health and, and, and people's access to care and things like that. Um, so what kinds of clients are these coordinated care teams working with? Like who is, who is our, I don't want to say target market, but I mean, who are, who are the types of people that we're, we're working with? Basically, we're working with the community. We not only work with adults, we work with seniors, we work with children. Whoever need, whoever has a need, that's the person that we address. We can't go into the home and say, I'm going to just work with grandma, but mama might have issues as well as the children. So we just do the whole gamut of the family. Mm -hmm. We try to make sure that it's diverse. A lot of times persons might need assistance with maybe just getting a birth certificate. They don't know how because maybe grandma was born in Florida, but they've been living in Virginia now for the last 15 years, but grandma don't have a birth certificate. So then we have to walk them through as to how to get that birth certificate from Florida to here in order for grandma to get the services that she needs. She needs her birth certificate. So it's things like that that people don't even think about that we work with. We work with them as far as, you know, getting social security. A lot of times they don't even know the steps. And if they know the steps, they don't really be comfortable in taking the steps. So we advocate for them as well as being a liaison between the resources. We are not a resource, but we connect them with the resources. Mm -hmm. Maggie, earlier you'd mentioned that initially there was 10 community health workers. How many of these positions are there now? There are 20. They are not all filled, but there are at least 20 spots okay. on the team. Mm -hmm. So reactively hiring for yes. those then? And those positions work with, the, like they're employed by different organizations. It's not one organization that employs all of these people, correct? Correct. And and while we're on this topic, so I mean, I, I, this this program launched in 2021, so what has sort of been the, I guess, the impact so far as far as, you know, the number of people we've served, the number of people we've connected with? What sort of impact have we seen so far? So last year, from January 1 to December 31, we served 692 clients. Okay, wow. Um, and that was just in one calendar year. We made 9,841 connections to resources for those clients that we served. Wow, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's awesome to hear. I guess on a, I, I know there's so many rules involved with HIPAA and things of, of what you all are allowed to share. And, and Cindy, you were just talking about some of these examples of, you know, helping people with Social Security or, or getting a birth certificate. But what are some of those other, I guess, more individual level successes that we've seen and how we've been able to 
as, as you were explaining, Cindy, we're helping people connect to the right resources. Basically, we work with them as far as doing making sure that they got insurance. A lot of times they're underinsured in the community. And understand that we cover Caswell County, North Carolina, as well as Pennsylvania County and the city of Danville. Um, so basically what we do is try to make sure that they have insurance, correct insurance. A lot of times we have to change the provider because the insurance that they have may not cover the issue that they need to be addressed. So we work with that as well. We also make sure that, you know, Everybody has insurance. The children have insurance. The grandma have insurance. Everybody has insurance. We also connect them with education. We try to, we work closely with DCC through the TRIO program as well as Scale Up and the TEAR program. We also connect with Avery. We have had connections with the new college in Monsville as well. So we basically try to find exactly what fits that particular person. Not so much of what we think, but we talk to them, we learn what they want to do. So you have to kind of like look at the person, the individual person and go from there. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool that it's such a holistic view of not just we do this one thing, but it's it seems like, and, and that, it seems like it's expanding since you guys started, that that's continuing to expand what resources we can connect to and how, how we can support clients. And how can, how do people that need support get connected to this program? So there are multiple ways. Our Reach AmeriCorps program, which I know we're going to talk about a little later, uh, they are a referral source. We receive referrals from all of our partnering organizations. Cindy identifies um, overutilizers within the emergency department. The goal of the Reach partnership is for it to be no wrong entry into the system. Yeah, so we also do a lot of community outreach, you know, set up at resource fairs and things like that. We get a lot of clients there. Um, if an individual is being seen at PATHS and nowhere else, that's fine because there are community health workers at PATHS that can enter them into the REACH partnership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a cool idea that it's not like, because I think a lot of things are, are sort of seen as this like almost like a pipeline where you're trying to push people, you know, in one way out the other. But that's cool that it's just all of these different parts working together and there's no right or wrong way to do it. You just mentioned the Reach AmeriCorps program, so that's a good good place to go now. What is the Reach AmeriCorps program, and how is that connected to to this to the Reach Partnership? So the Reach AmeriCorps program is a public health AmeriCorps program, um, and what those individuals do is they go out in the community and provide free ninety minute workshops on various health topics. So our Reach AmeriCorps program does more of a group approach, whereas then they can identify individuals that have a more specific need and can be referred to our community health workers for that individualized one-on-one -on -one attention that they may require. Where are these workshops happening? How is that How is that figured out? So they happen all over the community. Um, we do them in churches. We do them in long-term care settings. We do them anywhere that someone has a need. We do it at senior centers. There's no limitation of where we can do them. Right. They are definitely recruiting for these AmeriCorps positions. I think it's 20, about 25 hours a week, and there's a stipend involved, as well as tuition reimbursement and, and, and different benefits like that. Definitely a great service opportunity for, for those who are interested. So, I mean, you mentioned that that's more of a group approach to then figure out who needs that individualized support. So, But what you were saying before is that's just one way that someone could enter, right. that there's there's all those different ways, and that's just another another way that someone could get in. So in the last fiscal year, so they had 20 members who served 480, different, 480 clients um, and contributed almost 4,800 service hours. Um, so that's another, um, just to, sh to show the impact that this program is making. And that's, again, they're actively recruiting for, for more members for that program. So we've talked we've talked a good amount about the the impact both on the individual level and then Cassandra you were you were sort of breaking down those numbers as far as how many different clients we've served. You know, what have been some of the lessons we've learned so far? I know we've both on both on that big picture level and then also for on on, on the boots on the ground level. I'll start by saying um, we all use the same electronic medical record. So everyone in the partnership uses the same electronic medical record and that was hard. It's very hard Collaboration as a whole, I think everybody can agree, is hard. And to get folks, you know, on a new system, all of us using the same system, assuring everything is entered correctly, that was a challenge. But now that we've done it, I think that's probably one of the things we have working the most in our favor. I had to learn a lot when I was placed in Sova because their rules are totally different. But one thing that I did learn is 
no one person comes to the hospital for the same reason. So it was a lesson learned for me. I was looking at, oh, overutilizers, overutilizers. No, not always overutilizers. It's just that a lot of times they just don't know where to go to get the resources. So learning that resources are available to a lot of persons is like, oh, wow, I never knew I could go this route. I never knew I could talk to someone. And it makes a difference, in, but it makes it smooth, a smoother transition when they know that they got someone there to kind of like guide them which way to go. I would just say that I think there are lots of intangible things too, benefits that have come from this work. Um, you know, I think sometimes we, if we're thinking about, you know, why people don't go to the doctor, why they're not taking care of their health or, you know, why they're struggling, you know, it's easy to point to, to you know, all of these sort of shortcomings. But I think when you have community health workers and community paramedics who are working one-on-one -on -one with people and really getting to know them and building a relationship and building trust, um, I think there's just like a lot of deeper barriers that we don't fully understand until we talk to those people and, and get to know them. And so I think just the um, the value that they bring, you know, to our work with the Health Collaborative and all of our partners and, you know, sort of demonstrating how important it is to have trust and, you know, how uh, even as, as organizations and service providers thinking about the way that we meet our clients where they're at and how we can better serve them. I think that so many of those things too, you know, we can't necessarily measure that in numbers, but um, but it's made a difference on, you know, all the people who get to work as part of this partnership and um, and who come into contact with the CHWs and, and other partners of the of the REACH partnership. So um, I think just, you know, recognizing all of the ways that influences uh, the work that we do, it's just been really impactful and really valuable for our, our community. No, absolutely. And we're all about collaboration here and all about, you know, being working together with different groups, you know, whether that be public sector, private sector, whether that be across industries, whatever, whatever that might be to one, you know, figure out what what people, what companies, whatever, wh whoever we're working with at the time need um, and, and how we can help support that. And I think this is another this program is just a great example of that, of how we sort of bring bring different groups together to, to solve that need that that ultimately does tie back into. I mean, you mentioned job placement at the beginning and, and how th this does tie into economic growth and economic vitality and, and, and the the health of our workforce matters. I did want to circle back real quick to something that I think we probably should have started with in the beginning. Is so I know we we sort of measure our community health. Um, one one way we measure that is through the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Does this this um, these measurements of of health factors and health outcomes for different communities? And I'll just open it up to you guys to to talk about that context that we started this program in. That I, I know we rank pretty poorly in those for for Virginia. But talk to us a little bit about that. So. Ideally, with the work that the Health Collaborative is doing and the REACH Partnership, we would like to see those health outcomes improve. However, that's not something that's going to happen in a two-year period or a five-year period. We're working with generational, systemic, and socioeconomic health factors. So it's something that's really going to take a lot of time and work to move the needle on. And I'll, I'll add to that, you know, the ranking system, I think, can be a little misleading because when you're ranking something someone's always going to be at the top and always going to be at the bottom. And, you know, when you think about like the state of Virginia, for example, just how different Northern Virginia is from Southern Virginia. Um, you know, if you're, it's hard to, um, it's hard to advance or move up in the rankings, even if in your community you're making improvements and you're, um, you know, your outcomes are improving. The ranking system, I think, makes it difficult to see that. So I know something that we've tried to do in the Health Collaborative is really um, sort of remove ourselves from that ranking system, but just looking at, you know, our health equity report or looking at the the metrics that make up, the that contribute to the ranking, because that's where we really see um, the improvements and we see things changing over time. Even if it's slow moving, like we are think moving in the right direction in a lot mm -hmm. of ways. So what are some of those those metrics or those things that we're watching to sort of point to it to say this this program is working? Obviously with with that very important point that you're talking about that this is not a short-term thing. This is very much a long-term effort. 
Yeah, I mean, some things like, you know, health insurance access, which, you know, eventually, hopefully would contribute to the frequency with which people are seeing a primary care physician or a dentist. Um, And then, you know, looking at different chronic diseases and the prevalence of those things and, you know, how, how that's changing over time. And, you know, we're, we're, equity is is an important value in our work. And so we're also looking at, um, you know, differences between populations or between communities, because we see differences, you know, where you live um, has an impact on these outcomes. And so we are also looking for, you know, decreasing the gaps, you know, between people who live in in this neighborhood versus this neighborhood. Um, So lots of things and, and, and even, you know, things like, uh, poverty rates and educational outcomes. I mean, again, these are, it's hard to move the needle on these, but I think this this work is contributing to those things as well. The work that we're doing is slow moving work. Um, and just to kind of reiterate on some of the things that we had talked about earlier, the wonderful thing about this work is it's not cookie cutter. So every individual is different. Every approach that you need to take with an individual is different with the goal of hopefully having that positive health outcome. That's the overarching goal. The way we have to get there is a little different. Right. Again, that's that's really cool with that individualized level and that long term long term approach. I think that's that's cool to see. Because obviously that takes investment, that takes time. That's you know, this is not some quick fix. Um, so it's cool to see the investment and time and, and intentionality being put into this program and this this um, this effort. But that's all the the questions that I have for you guys. I mean I think again this is a really cool a really cool program that on its face, I mean, when I first learned about this, I was like, how in the world is IALR involved in this program? Like that, that doesn't make sense. But I think it just goes back to our desire to, to bring different groups together to solve problems that ultimately contribute to the economic growth of growth and transformation of, of Southern Virginia and really, really beyond that as well. So um, but that's, that's all the questions that I have. Is, is there anything else that you guys would want to add or any, any parting thoughts you would want to share? Can I add one more thing? You absolutely can. Yes. <laughs> The community has been great as far as marketing the Community Health Workers Program. They are very, very good about sharing information, making sure that, you know, other persons learn about us and what we do. So I give all my applause to the community because they are like a better resource than any other resource that we've been working with since I've been doing this program. And I've been here since 2015. Mm-hmm. So I just think I just think the community has been great about sharing information. They will do referrals. And that's the best thing about it. You don't have to go through an organization to get a referral to us. A community person can just pick up the telephone or just see us on the street and say, I need some help. And it works just like that. So it's not a lot of formality. And I like it like that because then we are approachable and we get to learn the community. We get to learn who needs what, where they are and all of that. So I just think that's just the greatest part about the whole program. Mm -hmm. If someone is interested in working as a community health worker, I know those workers are stationed in different work for different organizations involved, but how would they go about finding those opportunities? They will be listed on Indeed, I believe, or if an individual is interested, they could email me their resume and I will get it to the appropriate organization. Cassandra, Maggie, anything else you guys want to add? I think so. Okay. Well, thank you guys for being here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Megabytes ILR's on-site cafe features everyday favorites, convenient ordering options, and an eager staff ready to welcome and serve you. Our enticing menus offer something for everyone from a fresh, well-stocked salad bar, wraps, sandwiches, and our rotating hot buffet offered on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Megabytes is open Monday through Friday from 9.15 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. To view menus and for more information, visit ilr.org slash megabytes.